Now, imagine you're watching our late night news when you hear your back door rattling and then you see a red laser pointed on your chest. One Portsmouth man says it happened to him and in a neighborhood where weapons are everywhere, he didn't hesitate to grab his own gun. Ten of your sides, Andy Fox shows us it was a decision with lingering repercussions. What are we talking about here, Andy? Tom and Nicole, decision to shoot. Brandon Watson is absolutely sure the way he reacted to red laser sights on his chest justified what he did. The question is, would the legal system agree? And who was in his backyard anyway? January 3rd, 2013, a single shot through a window. Brandon Watson claims he was protecting his family when his wife heard noises in the backyard. She said, oh my gosh, somebody's in our backyard. Noises getting closer. She heard. So they were coming in the back door. Yeah. We ran upstairs very quickly. She saw guys in all black from right here. Watson says he couldn't immediately find his cell phone to call 911. So I run downstairs with my firearm and I post right here. I announced myself. I said, who is that? Who is that? I have a gun. And as soon as I said that, two red laser beams, a couple red laser beams was on my chest. A gun laser sight laser aiming where a shot chest. would hit. So I looked at the red laser beams on my chest and I fired a, a warning shot. He ran to get help from a state police neighbor across the street. I said, whoa, I said, I was just like that. I said, whoa, they said, who shot this shot? I said, I did, I have a gun in my hand. They said, put the gun down. This is Watson's handgun. He immediately dropped and then got stunning news. We just got news that you shot at an officer. I said, officer? I said, it, no, nobody came to my door. What you mean, officer? It, nobody, you know, I didn't know there were no officers. The dark figures in the backyard were Portsmouth police officers who did not announce themselves. As far as the officer's response, I support their response 100%. Portsmouth Police Chief Ed Hargis claims his men never heard Watson. Anytime a police officer hears that there's a, a firearm involved, they start giving verbal commands. They start yelling police. It came out in court police were in the wrong backyard. They were supposed to be in Patricia Brooks' yard, who lives next door to Watson. She had called 911 because she heard unrelated noises downstairs. Portsmouth Commonwealth's attorney Earl Mobley explains how police ended up in the wrong backyard. When they go around to the back, is it two houses down? Is it three? Is it four? But when they go around to the back, they see one of the gates open, which raises their suspicion about that must be the house. Mobley admits Watson did not know police were in his backyard, but prosecutes him anyway for misdemeanor, reckless handling of a firearm. You can't just fire indiscriminately through the window. A judge agrees, and Brandon's found guilty and appeals. A second judge declares a mistrial. Then Brandon chooses to have a jury trial. This can't be doing your job when you come in my backyard, try to open my door, open my window, then flash red laser beams on my chest because you thought I was the burglar. And I thought you was the burglar. The seven-person jury buys that and finds Brandon Watson not guilty after only 47 minutes deliberating. Twice. Wavy TV yeah, employee and um, juror Danny Barnes. It wasn't reckless. The jurors and I disagree with that point. The jury thought Watson showed restraint, only firing one shot. There was agreement that if there had been more than one bullet hole, if he had sprayed the wall with bullets or, you know, you know, fired bang, 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 that would have been reckless. And the jury was concerned police went to the wrong home, that there was confusion. Now, that wasn't explained very well. Um, and, and that was a sticking point for most of us. The jurors honed in on the red beams on Watson's chest. The police kept saying that they had their weapons pointed at the ground at all times. At the same time, they said they were using their tack lights on the gun to illuminate whatever they were looking at, which you can't be doing both at the same time. Could a light have gone into the window? Yes. But I don't think it was there for any long period of time. It would have been a, a moving type of situation. So when Mr. Watson says a red laser ended up on his chest, that's possible? It's possible, sure. And that's what led to the shooting? That's when he discharged his firearm. The Watson case has helped change Portsmouth police policy with the use of red gun laser sights. This case and the firearms instructor's concerns as well as executive staff that we modified it and we've taken lasers off the weapons. Most stunning. The jury found police were unfair in how they pursued Watson. He was put in a, in a no-win situation. For Brandon Watson, his life turned upside down was unemployed for 10 months. No jobs would hire me after they ran the criminal background because it's reckless handling with firearm. That's what he said, no jobs. Everything ended at that point. Brandon Watson is pursuing legal remedies 
to what happened to him that night. One thing's for sure. Chances are, before tonight, you probably did not know Brandon Watson. But you sure would have known him had his bullet been a few inches to the right or left hitting that police officer. Portsmouth police got lucky that night, and so did Brandon Watson. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.